Hey, welcome back everyone. Time for Daybreak in 10 on Color 10. We are on the air with you for the next few minutes without commercials beginning right now. And first, let's head on over to meteorologist Elisa Rafa with our forecast first. Good morning, Elisa. Good morning. We are starting out cool and comfortable this morning. Dry too, just a couple of clouds out there. It is 59 degrees in Springfield with calm winds and pleasant dew points in the upper 50s. Dry roads as you head out the door, door clean sweeps on satellite and radar at 60 degrees in Monette, 59 degrees in Springfield, and 56 degrees in Mountain Grove. Still finding comfortable dew points in the upper 50s, some lower 60s, a little bit more sticky to the south and east, getting a little bit closer to that tropical air mass. But for the most part, we're all feeling pretty comfortable this morning. As you're homeschooling, you'll find some clouds out there this morning, mostly sunny skies this afternoon with that high at 79 degrees. Overnight, we'll find those lows dipping into the 50s, so we might need some jackets by tomorrow morning. Sunshine tomorrow afternoon with those highs in the middle and upper 70s. So the next three days look great. Lots of sunshine. Very nice. A fall feel. Those highs in the upper 70s. Overnight lows in the low to middle 50s. The fall feel continues through the weekend. Temperatures still hovering that 80 degree mark. Again, overnight lows get a little bit cool in the 50s. Joe, Jen. All right, thank you, Elisa. A new study shows job candidates are actually rated lower in virtual interviews than during in-person interviews for likelihood to land a job. Nigel McDonald met with the professors behind this new research and is in studio with us this morning to explain why this is. Nigel. Yeah, Joe, well, good morning. The professors say it's going to take a little work from both the employer and candidate to make the change successful. Now, their study used a 10 point scale and asked the participants questions like how likable the person was and if they would hire them. Participants rated the candidate who was physically in the room a seven versus a five for the people they met virtually. This difference shows the importance of consistency. They say if possible, an employer should do either all video interviews or all in person meetings. For the applicant, it's all about engaging with everyone who is on the call. They encourage a candidate to greet everyone, even if they will only be observing. In our experiment, the people who were watching through the computer, um, it was like a one way video link where there wasn't kind of some the interviewee looking back at them. Question. And we think that that kind of social pressure of like knowing people are observing you yeah. is real helpful to or make you feel like you need to at least pretend to pay attention. I know I've felt that way in meetings and stuff. <laughs> if my camera's on, I am looking more at the computer than if my camera's off. Well, the study also found a potential similarity could happen in virtual education with the way students view their teachers remotely as opposed to in person. Now, you can visit our website at OzarksFirst.com for a link to more on their research. All right, Nigel, thank you. And businesses that rely on performance art to survive are still facing financial difficulties. The Galois Theater and the Conservatory of the Ozarks are both struggling. Associate Director of the Galois, Joy Bilyeu Steele, says they lose money with opening at less than capacity. So they're doing classic movie nights and now even auctioning posters from past concerts, many of them autographed. For the Conservatory of the Ozarks, owner Heather Leverage says their low enrollment rates for students looking to learn music, drama, or other arts are forcing them to close for good in two weeks. In the middle of August, I just was like doing the budget and I'm like, next month is September and that's going to be six months of this and apparently there's no end in sight. I think it's important for all of us to appreciate how important the arts are for our community. I look at old pictures of the theater full of people and it literally makes me cry because <laughs> I think when is that going to happen again? The arts really do something for us. They, they bless us and they give us this joy that you don't get anywhere else. Will still teach students under the same business in her home studio. And if you want to see what posters the Galois has to offer, you can visit this story on our website, OzarksFirst.com. Bringing you some news around the region now. Parents and kids once again protested in St. Louis County over restrictions that have kept many student athletes from playing sports. The county executive's office acknowledges teams and athletes can legally travel to another county to play, but protesters think that's even more of a reason to lift restrictions that are currently in place. 
We're asking for the county to listen to us as parents, to listen to our children and get them back to being kids. County officials have said they're more interested in compliance than punishment, but teams could face civil penalties if they defy the order and something goes wrong. Continuing coverage on a story out of Fayetteville that we told you about yesterday. Two more vehicles were set on fire, bringing the total to nine over the past 72 hours. The Fayetteville Police Department and the Fire Marshal's Office are working together on this investigation. The agencies can confirm it's arson, but still not clear who started the fires and why. All nine vehicles were set on fire within a 10-mile radius. Fire Marshal Jeremy Ashley says this investigation is extremely unusual. We're not going to rule out that it's uh, it's the same person or group of people that uh, uh, that could be setting these fires. Both agencies are taking turns patrolling the areas now where those cars were set on fire. Going around America for you, a massive fire sparked by a gas explosion in Oklahoma has forced locals there to evacuate. The explosion happened in Piedmont, which is roughly 20 miles away from Oklahoma City. Officials say the blast was caused by a rupture in the high pressured underground pipeline. The fire has been brought under control and the supply of gas into the pipeline has since been shut off. In from around the world now, thousands of migrants stranded on an island in Greece are being moved into a new temporary camp today. This is happening more than a week after a fire tore through the biggest migrant camp where they had been staying. That fire left over 12,000 people without shelter or access to food or water. The new camp can take in at least 5,000 people. The nerve agent used to poison Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was detected on an empty water bottle from his hotel room. New evidence suggests he was poisoned there and not at the airport at, as first thought. He got sick on a domestic flight in Russia last month and was subsequently airlifted to Berlin for treatment. Laboratories in Germany, France and Sweden have established he was poisoned by a nerve agent, though Russia denies this and says it has seen no evidence of that. Now here's a look at what's coming up after daybreak. Coming up, the damage left behind by Hurricane Sally, now moving inland is a tropical depression. Plus, we talk with the former director of the CDC after President Trump contradicts the agency's coronavirus vaccine timeline. Coming up on CBS This Morning. And now a last check of our forecast. Elisa, I am looking at the seven day and I am very happy with it. It is nearly perfect. I, I mean, lots of sunshine. The only downside is, is we still have these very localized drought conditions. So any mm. maybe farmers or gardeners that needed some rain are not going to get it. Mm. Um, so just thinking about them. But otherwise, just for the kiddos, we're recess and, you know, just outside and basking in some sunshine. Can, let's just gorgeous. leave it up there and stare at it, right? It's so, it's so nice. This is what we got to do. And nobody said anything about how my cute little bag with the falling leaves, guys. I did see that, but it's... Isn't it yeah. cute? Oh. <laughs> It's a, isn't it cute? I Sorry, everyone. It, Elisa. Find Elise on Facebook it. and give her her praise for the falling leaves that she Aren't put in the they cute? Very cute. Okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> Cannot believe it's already fall and Halloween is six weeks away. Not That's yet. it. Oh, my goodness. Start thinking of costume ideas, all right? <laughs> Thanks for watching here on Daybreak on this Thursday morning, everyone.